You were on Sky News earlier this morning uh, with a, not a jihadist, but certainly a Muslim activist yeah. uh, who argued uh, that to publish a picture or a drawing of Muhammad was racist. It's absolutely appalling the way all of this is being tied up. The, that gentleman in question, I say gentleman, but uh, used the opportunity today to claim that the 12 people massacred yesterday were all racist. It's a bit rich, really. Um, but this is what happens, uh, as, as Majid well knows as well. There are a certain number of people, a small number of people, who are willing to go into newspaper offices and gun people down. There is then a larger number of people who are willing to say, well, they may have had a point, and a larger group still who will use it in future to say, you should be careful before you think of saying that Douglas or Majid or Andrew or whoever. You, 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 I'd watch out if I were you. I cannot tell you it is that silent uh, 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 self-censorship which is the one that really snuffs us out and it is going on all the time. Mm. It's been going on for 10 years and our societies have failed. The terrorists does have that Does that worry you, John? I think that we should express solidarity. Again, I remember after 7-7 that everyone expressed solidarity with Britain in those circumstances, but the terrorists did not succeed. They wanted to divide this country. There was the danger of a backlash against Muslims in this country. It did not happen. There is no reason why it should happen in France or in Germany. So I hope that people will be sensible in the reaction to this. I hope that people will express solidarity with the satirists. I hope the satire will be spread across the place, as David Aronovich was saying Should this newspapers publish these, publish these cartoons? Yes, absolutely. But you believe sense, that? Yes. In a sense, it has got worse, because we now have more British-born and raised Muslims fighting abroad for jihadist groups than we've ever had, mm. and more so than went to Afghanistan. So in a sense, we haven't dealt with the problem. It, uh, it, doesn't it also need to, to revalue a lot of the, the foreign policy mantras? Uh, that we've been presented with over the past decade. It was said that we had brought this on because of the invasion of Iraq. Um, but last time I looked, we didn't invade Syria, yeah. and the French didn't invade Iraq mm. or Syria, but they still get attacked. Exactly. There, there was no connection. Well, the, to suggest we're going to be a, we're going to get these attacks because of our foreign policy is just wrong. These attacks have other objectives, and that's what we have to bear in mind. So it's not because of Iraq or not because of not doing Syria. We have to deal with these problems at the root, and if we stay back here trying to shelter ourselves at home, we will not succeed. We've got to go and deal with the problem and where can it I is. Just pick up on that. There are a whole set of excuses which, at times like this, people put into the mouths of the terrorists, which they did not ask for. There have been people on the news channels all day for the last 24 hours saying it's something to do about segregationism or lack of integration in French society. It's about the banlieue. They, they don't like the suburb they live in, so they go into a newspaper office and gun down journalists. People who say it's about the foreign policy. They're giving these people excuses they did not ask for. It can't be stressed enough. The people who do this do not do it just for the, the things we would like them to have done it for. We don't need to use them as megaphones for whatever prejudices we have ourselves. They did it because they want to enforce Islamic blasphemy laws on the free West, and it cannot be allowed to stand. This is taking place, though, at a difficult time in Europe, a time of economic stagnation and mass unemployment and the rise of the nativist right. Mm -hmm. uh, Marine Le Pen's National Front is already the largest party in the opinion polls. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. is likely to secure her position. And an acute identity crisis that's playing out across Europe. And that's why I said with my opening remarks that it makes it even more important for those who want to claim that centre ground, that, that liberal centre ground that I call it, have to start speaking out. Mm -hmm. It means conversations like this, but also importantly within Muslim communities, a push for reform of the blasphemy taboos that do exist within mm -hmm. Muslim communities. It's not racist, it's not Islamophobic to scrutinize the idea or the religion of Islam. It is to blow a mosque up. Sure. That's yeah. anti-Muslim hate crime. But to talk about well, an actually, idea... That's just illegal. That's illegal. Yeah, no idea. <laughs> Last no time I looked, it was absolutely. illegal to blow anything up. And no idea is above scrutiny. And that's something which we have to be able to distinguish between. Uh, scrutinizing uh, any idea. I mean, the Quran itself scrutinizes other faiths at the end of the day. All religions yeah. do that. Uh, look, look at what... You know, this is such a great conversation. There's a lot of wisdom being thrown around here by Douglas Murray, my... Majid, you know, by Andrew and by the other gentleman from 10 Downing Street, uh, to get back to Douglas Murray, where he's saying, you know, it's sort of like the elitists or the liberals or the left, and, and even maybe on the conservative side, let's just put it this way, you know, putting together excuses, putting together, you know, a way of why this is happening. Oh, this is happening because we're different. Oh, this is happening because of the foreign policy that we put together. Oh, this is happening because of the way that, um, you know, our culture is. Oh, this is happening because of our freedom of speech laws. Oh, this is happening because, um, 
you know, we have a plurality of religions, a plurality of faiths, you know, that are in our country. And as Douglas said, why are we giving excuses? These are not the excuses that the terrorists, the fundamentalists are using, that the Islamists are using. That's not what they're doing. Their thing is basically to set up a theocratic institution, which is fundamentalist and Islamist, and something totally different than what it was in the past. Somehow they've gotten this idea that the world is, become, is going away from you know, religion, is going away from God. And the only way that it can be brought back together is through this Islamist theocratic society. And so they look at the West, and what do they say? America's the great Satan. They look at the United Kingdom, and they say, it's the Satan, it's, you know, Satan's brother. And they look at the entire Western democracies in terms of, you know, they look at the entire Western democracies as just places that are have completely disintegrated into just anti-God, you know, uh, anti-purity, you know, anti, I guess, uh, what's, just, just, you know, anti everything that they feel that they, that these Islamist fundamentalists, these terrorists feel that needs to be instituted in the world that God had said this is what it's supposed to be and they are not doing it and that's the rest of the world but only they can bring it back. I mean, if you talk to a jihadist, if you talk to an Islamist, if you talk to these terrorists, they wouldn't know a foreign policy if it hit them in the head. They don't even know what they're reading in the scriptures because most of them, okay, are uneducated. They haven't read anything in the Quran or anything like that. But they're being told that by the leadership that this is what it says, this is the interpretation, this is what it means. And they take it hook, line, and sinker, and they believe it. And that's the other way these kids are being radicalized. When Anna brought that thing up in terms of that these are homegrown, they're speaking through and flinch, they speak perfect English. I mean, no accent, grown, raised up in Britain, raised up in France. And yet, for some reason, feel distanced from that country, feel distanced, feel separate, feel segregated. I don't know how that happens. I just don't. It's hard to imagine how that happens because you would be thinking that these people would be from, you know, the, the, you know, the countries which are fostering terrorism, which are fostering this hate, which are fostering these uh, Islamist groups to rise not on British soil, not on American soil or Western European soil. How the hell is that happening? Anyways, let's get back to the debate. The, the other day uh, in Germany, she used her New Year message to attack the people going out on the streets of Germany, uh, the anti-Islamization, anti-Salafist mm -hmm. protests. Now look, uh, I think those protests are a secondary symptom. They're obviously a secondary symptom. Some of it may be perfectly legitimate and sensible. Other bits around the edges may be unpleasant. But here is our problem in Europe, and it's been the problem for years now. Our politicians want to identify the secondary problem, the response to the problem, without actually dealing with the primary problem. Yes. After every attack like this, as I say, the French president goes on television in December and says, these are acts of lunacy. Allah Akbar happened to be shouted, but it's an act of lunacy. In Britain, every single attack, the prime minister straight out on the steps of Downing Street has nothing to do with Islam. We have to change this narrative. This has everything to do with Islam, and it, we have to admit that if we're going to start dealing with it. We're showing pictures now outside Notre Dame of the uh, silence uh, that uh, was part of France's uh, day of national mourning declared by the president of the French Republic uh, as people gathered throughout France, but particularly in the iconic center of the capital in front of Notre Dame uh, Cathedral. And you can hear the bells in the background there. It was a grim, uh, gray, rainy, as I use a good Scottish word, dreich day in Paris. And I think that uh, summed up the mood of the country as these events uh, were taking place. When I look at the, the rather um, fundamental uh, arrangements that Al-Qaeda had in Afghanistan 
from which it launched the 9-11 attack. And I compare that now to what is available in Islamic State and in parts of Yemen to train these people. Would it not be right to conclude that this is going to get worse before it gets better? Well, certainly the training aspect, because it's not just that. You also have Boko Haram in Nigeria. Indeed. You have terrorists now in Libya. Uh, mm -hmm. They can do it, in, as you say, in Yemen, in Somalia. So, yes, they have a wide range now of failed states from which they can operate. Before there was just Afghanistan, Afghanistan or before that, Sudan. Now it's a much wider threat. What is to be done? If you had one uh, single thing that you thought would make things better, let's look at Britain at the moment, where there is huge fear. I mean, I know from the security forces, there is huge fear that what happened in Paris could very easily now happen in Britain. And as I said earlier, some are even surprised that it hasn't happened mm. already. Mm. It's overdue, unfortunately. And I think what... What can, what can we do? Let's, let's pick on one big, fat, missing, uh, sort of this void in the whole of this debate. And that's that our government, up until today, believe it or not, still does not have a countering non-violence mm. extremism strategy for communities. It's been many, many years, I think five years in the making, and we still haven't published one. Uh, CLG, the Community uh, and Local Government Department, was responsible, was tasked with publishing this strategy, and it still hasn't been published. Mm. And I've been asking the same question every single time I come onto this show, why not? Where right. is it? Well, there was one minister who was blocking it. She's since resigned. Um, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll continue to ask that add, final, uh, final it's point. It's got to do with all sorts of things, mass immigration, loose borders, all sorts of things. But if there's one practical thing right now that should be done, it should be this. Uh, in 2006, the only uh, organ in Britain that had anything to do with our cartoons was a magazine now defunct called The Liberal. It published a link on its website to the cartoons. The Metropolitan Police visited the offices of that magazine in London in 2006 and said, if you don't take down the link, we cannot promise to protect you or your staff or your premises. I would say this. Today, the Home Secretary, Theresa May, should announce, should, should speak quietly to newspaper editors, perhaps it should be done behind the scenes, and should say to all of them, we're not telling you what you should or should not do, but should you choose to assert your right to cartoon Mohammed on your front page as anyone else can and would and, do, uh, and, and every other historical character can be cartooned, if you do choose to do that, the state, the country, everything will be behind you. We will look after okay. you. All right, we're going to have to... Yes, freedom of speech, freedom of choice freedom of thought, freedom of expression. It is such a, um, it is just such a uh, thing that we have, precious right, you know, that we have. And we should use it with prudence. And we should use it to decide, you know, with what our words are going to say. But if we decide to use it, for whatever idea that it is, it should be allowed to stand and violence should not be perpetrated against that idea. We should be human enough, we should be big enough, we should be strong enough to say, you know, let's debate those ideas. Let's debate those ideas in an arena of seeing if we can make some progress in the arena of peace, in the arena of words. That's what needs to be done. We find a lot of things offensive when people talk, when people write, when people draw, when people do a ton of things to express themselves. We find offenses each and every single day. I find things offensive. You people find things offensive. People are going to find this video offensive find that video offensive. You said this, that offends me. You said that, that offends me. Oh, you said that, I agree with that. Somebody else, I don't agree with that. To some point it offends, to some point it's just a disagreement. But what Douglas was saying is that if governments, if security, if police, if they don't have the backs of its citizens in the regard of freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of expression. If they don't have our backs, who will? That's the question we leave it with. Anyways, folks, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, we'd love for you to subscribe to our channel. Take a look at, um, uh, hit all the <laughs> like, share, and follow us. Take a look at our videos above and below. My final thought is always, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.